Right, so we've arrived in the very picturesque little village of Itchner in Chichester Harbour. This is where I've agreed to meet Justin. He's going to be around here somewhere. Not quite sure what to expect, but this is going to be my first leg, my first stage of my initiation into fly fishing for sea bass. I'll tell you what, I'm really, really excited about it as well. I've got so many questions I want to ask. Let's hope I'm going to get some answers and maybe even catch some fish. Now let's hope we can find him down here somewhere. Man, there's a lot of boats here. Oh, look, there's a guy sitting on the end. That could be him. Justin. Steve. Hello, mate. Great to see you. <laughs> Thanks you for coming. Too. I've got so many questions for you. So many that I don't actually know where to start. That's right. That's why you're here. Yeah. You never fly fish in the salt before? No. OK. Well, river stuff. I've done some big river stuff. I've done lots of trouting. Yeah. But never, you know, never on anything salty. OK, well, that's fine. If you, uh, you know, it's a good place to start. It's a very uh, controlled area. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, you won't be buffered by too much wind, which I think you'll probably find is your biggest impact and the oh, biggest really? comparison between trout fishing and uh, saltwater fly fishing. If you're a reservoir trout fisherman, then you've got a marginal advantage because yeah. you're probably no, used. Not. <laughs> OK, well, we're taking it very steady. <laughs> to start with, let's put you on a jacket. Yeah, we're going cool. out the yeah, last part it... of the air. All right, brilliant. Chuck that on. It's all that. Then and we'll uh, life jacket on. We'll and life jacket. OK. And then we'll kick off. So what do you think for, for today? Something, are we going to start pretty easy? You're not going to put me in at the deep end, are you? No, we're not going to. We're going to start you off. We've got the last hour of the ebb going out. We'll park up somewhere, uh, probably find a shingle bar somewhere or a sandbank. And then yeah. uh, we've got a selection of rods today. We're using loop speed runner reels, everything from a weight six, weight seven, weight eight. We'll go through the whole thing, yeah. how we rig up, yeah. what leaders we use, what yeah. lines great, we use, great, which great, flies great. we use, and we'll take it from stage one so uh, you're understanding what you're doing. Cool, and do you think we might have got a chance of catching a fish today? I know this is like right at the beginning, less than one, stage one, but yeah. it'd be quite nice to think, you know. That... You've got a better than average chance of getting okay. hooked up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we've got quite a decent tide today. We've got an intermediate tide, which is, you know, in between a spring and a neap. You've got good tidal velocity and we're going into a fading light. So, uh, yeah, and we've got good cloud cover. So, um, let's, great, let's great, see what we can yeah, do. Yeah, 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 lovely. All right. I'm very excited. About Perfect. It. Step up forward. Cheers, man. What you've got there is you've got a very large arbor reel, great for distance in terms of the memory on the line and the reel yeah. is reduced to a minimum. An arbor is the circumference round? Yeah, right. it's, it's, it's a large arbor is exactly that. It's, it's, um, it's a reel face which is enhanced to uh, hold the line without, with, with as little coiling as possible. Right, okay. So when you start yeah, to yeah, shoot yeah. line, yeah. You've got less resistance against the guide eyes. So you'll find that an average reel is larger on the salt than it would be, let's say, for a chalk stream. Yeah. The reason for that is that distance casting on a chalk stream, not so important. When you walk, if you can just walk with the tips behind you, gotcha. just in case you trip. Yeah. Okay, let's make a camp here right. and we'll go through the stuff. What I'm going to do with you today, because you yeah. are new to it, and I want you to gain your confidence more than anything, that you can one handle the kit, 
I'm not going to put you on a huge fly. We've got <laughs> average clarity, Good. okay? Yeah. Uh, we've got an average tide. So what we're going to do is we're going to go on a small, um, light clouse. Great. Fantastic. Okay? Yeah. Right. And these clouses, um, because they work, I mean, they're, d they're designed with weight on the head. But if you f if you hold that, you'll suddenly realise that's quite a lump of weight to cast. That is, isn't it? Yeah. And that is quite a shock for some people that they've got to get their line speed up yeah. to be able to control the leader. Yeah. Um, and you know we do find this problem, but then again, you know we we can we can temper the size down. I mean, if you look at that, that's a two. Oh, okay. Okay, same patterns. Same and is design. there is there any rule for you know hook size or? Well, generally speaking, we would go larger hook and lighter, the more discoloration you've got. Right. Okay. Okay. And so it's a bit like salmon fishing. Yes, it is. Really. Yeah, okay. that's, that's what we do. Okay. Yeah. When you make a retrieve which is erratic, it opens up like the flagella movement of squid. Okay, okay. so if you have a larger hackle sausage like that, if you keep it, if you roll retrieve your line, you're going to keep the hackle very tight. Right. If you open up the hackle by pulling the line, yeah. you're going to open up and it will pulse, which is a trigger mechanism for a bass. Right. Without a shadow of it. It likes to see that movement. It likes to see that movement, and a lot of fish are. Um, you know, ag aggress the fly because you are doing that. Remember, a sea bass is predating from below its target quarry and it's looking at something as a silhouette. So it's basically looking upwards. Up. Right, okay. Which is why the head, the eyes on a bass are on its head. Right. Right on the top of its head. Oh, are they? Okay. So what it's doing is it's looking at this like that. All right. Usually from the side, okay, yeah. and, and quite sometimes substantially below the fly. So what you're saying is, in let's say in middle of July at one o'clock in the afternoon, yeah. when you've got a, you know the height of the midday sun, yeah. you may well find that a lighter pattern yeah, yeah, yeah. mixes with the water too aggressively. You're trying to help the fish locate. You remember. All right. So what we've got here is we've got, call it five o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Okay. Seven o'clock. Ten o'clock. Eleven o'clock. Twelve and two. Three. Five. Seven. Eight. At night. So the brighter the sun then, the greater the contrast you need yeah. for it to be seen because it's looking up. Okay, okay, right, I get that, yeah. So that was my first introduction to uh, sea bass flies. Not like anything I've seen before. Um, the thing that worries me, I suppose, a little bit is the weight of some of those chunky flies. Uh, I'm not a very good power caster. I'm, I'm used to casting very small, light, delicate little flies. Uh, these are not light and delicate. These are great whopping things with big hooks. Those uh, first ones we looked at are, uh, are weighted as well. Uh, and I think it's going to be, I'm going to find a different kind of casting technique for those. Well, sort of I'm going to find. Anyway, Justin's going to be kind, but he's going to be very nice to me, I think. He's going to start me on something relatively easily, easy, so I can uh, break myself in gently. Um, but it remains to be seen yet how far I can throw it. Probably not very far.